still from the International Monetary Fund, but this time taking a look at what it's doing on Ghana. The IMF has completed its review of its extended credit facility to the West African country. Let's bring in other son, Igamin Nonyan. She is a senior macroeconomist with Ecobank Group in London. She joins me to take a look at this development and the impact on the economy. Thank you so much, Gaimin, for your time. Thank you. Now, what is the significance for this review for Ghana? Well, I think it's a very good thing because it shows how far Ghana has come um, ever since its currency was sliding two years ago and um, the fiscal, the budget deficit was um, approaching almost 12%. To GDP. Um, so we've seen that the reforms are actually taking, um, having a positive impact on the economy. And as a result of that, the IMF has been pleased, investors have been pleased. We've just seen um, Ghana issue a euro bond, which was well oversubscribed. So there are good indications that Ghana is on the right track. Mm. Now, the IMF stated that the program implementation remains broadly satisfactory. However, the economic outlook remains difficult as fiscal challenges mount. How do you think the government should deal with this? Well, I think a lot of the pressure will be coming from the fiscal side. Um, yes, we've seen a reduction in government spending. Um, there's now a move towards um, increasing, um, reducing non-essentials. And, and then increasing expenditure in very priority areas. But at the same time, having said that, we're also seeing that government wage bill remains high. It's, it's really bloated. And um, we've just seen last, recently that the, the, the government decided to issue a bill, pass a bill, which required central bank financing. Although they've assured the IMF that they're not going to um, use that, they're committed to zero financing from the central bank. Um, uh, you know, there's no there's no probability that they might not use that. So the fiscal the fiscal account still remains weak. Um, there still needs to be a strengthening of the public financial management um, program and as well as some um, increase of the tax base um, in order to generate more revenue. But obviously, uh, that will call for uh, work in terms of how to ensure that the fiscal consolidation for the economy is achieved. And of course, the implementation of the medium term debt management strategy is ongoing, according to what we hear uh, from IMF, which is seen as key to continue to restore market confidence. Do you share the same view? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if, if the one of the main reasons why we've seen very high um, levels of debt in Ghana is because of the high government spending. The government borrows a lot of money, both from external sources and domestically. And as a result, we saw last year, um, the total debt to GDP rose to um, pre-crisis levels, pre-crisis -pre HIPIC levels of above 70% of GDP. Um, ever since the consolidation, the fiscal consolidation program gained momentum this year, we've seen a reduction in that, so about 65% of GDP. Although in recent months, we've seen a slight increase in that as well, because there are a lot of pressures on the government in trying to meet its um, spending commitments. So there has, the government needs to take major control on that and strengthen um, the, the, the fiscal, the spending, pat its spending patterns, as well as try to improve the tax base and, and in, to, to increase um, revenue. Now, we know that uh, the last inflation figure that, that was released out of Ghana puts it at almost 70%. But at the last monetary policy meeting, uh, the committee actually kept the interest rate unchanged at 26%. Now, the IMF has actually stated that a tight monetary policy stance is needed to help bring inflation back to target. What is your perspective on this? When we look at plans to introduce additional changes to the Bank of Ghana Act, which is aimed at strengthening the central bank governance. Well, absolutely. I think um, because we've not seen um, the fiscal consolidation really um, gain momentum as much as we would like to, then monetary policy has got to remain tight. 
And I think that's part of the reason why we we saw that last month the central bank decided to keep the the policy rates um, at the same level. But this is costing the government. And I think that personally, the government is the 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 central bank has actually reached the peak of its tightening cycle. I do not expect uh, for the tightening. Um, it would either remain tight at 26% or reduce it, which is what we're projecting towards the end of the year, assuming that inflation starts to trend downwards and assuming that government spending, um, fiscal, fiscal consolidation program starts to um, be more meaningful and have more positive spillover effects on the economy. So until we see that, then we're likely to see a slight reduction in interest rates because at the moment it's increasing the government's debt servicing cost, which at the same time is leading to um, a, a widening of the fiscal deficits. So it's not good for the government to have such high interest rates, which at the same time crowds out the private sector. Thank you so much, Gaimin Nonyan, senior macroeconomist at uh, Echo Bank in London, talking about uh, the Ghanaian economy and uh, the plan by the IMF to continue to assist the troubled West African country. Now, boosting national trade can be increased if governments around the world focus on improving SME exports. This is according to the Geneva-based International Trade Center in a report published on Thursday. The ITC, a joint agency of the United Nations and the World Trade Organization that helps SMEs to trade, says meeting the standard for trade offers a guide for small businesses and an action plan for government. Standards and regulations are key to comp competitiveness and one of the defining elements of trade in the 21st century. Okay, let's cross over now to the fixed income market back home to take a look at how trading has been since uh, the opening session in the morning. Ifani Akweche, a fixed income dealer with Wemma Bank, joins me on the program. Good afternoon, Ifani, and welcome to the program. Okay, good afternoon. Now, tell us, what are the sentiments in the markets today? Yeah, um, at the market uh, today, um, due to the uh, uh, PME results as of yesterday, um, the TBS market is responding as expected. There's been um, a slight drop in yields, you know, just as expected as a result of the drop in um, uh, the MPI, um, MPI, the TBS um, um, PME results as of yesterday. So. But at the bond market, there was a little uh, sell-off as a result of the expected um, bond auction uh, next week. So the market has actually been reacting in different uh, directions. Okay, what is the outlook for the rest of the week, which is just about just tomorrow? What do you think the market will uh, look like tomorrow? Um, I, as at the moment, the, the market liquidity is around um, 20 um, uh, billion, uh, billion in the market, so we don't really expect, um, you know, the further buy in the market. We expect the market to remain at this level, um, pending the ne um, any further inflow into the market. But for the bond auction, uh, for the bond market, we expect the market to, at, at the same time, continue to sell down okay. as a result of the expected um, bond auction next week. Okay, that's basically what we expect by. Uh, Thank you so much, Ifai Akwech, a fixed income trader with Wemma Bank. We'll go on a break now. I'll be right back.